This is Dave with Taboo Customs. This video today, we'll be taking a look at uh, cutting some tube, some patterns and some tubes, on, uh, on our plasma table here and how we do that. So let's get to it. So this is actually the tube that uh, we're trying to create and for a project here uh, on a Cherokee. So we've, uh, we've already gone and we've got our 4x2 tube. We've already cut it to our 37 and a half inch length because we're not trying to cut the tube off necessarily. We did that in our bandsaw. What we want to do is cut this pattern into the tube. And uh, when you're doing something like this in the plasma table, obviously it's going to be a lot easier than us uh, having to drill or try to machine these. Uh, but you need to make sure that, you know, whatever you're creating is not real critical. I mean, uh, we'll still be accurate. The pattern will be accurate to itself. Uh, but the difficult thing is making sure this pattern uh, is in the right place on the tube. And for this application, it's not going to be a huge deal. Um, the way we designed this, we designed it so if this is off, the whole pattern is off a 16th, it won't really matter for us. And uh, those are the type of applications that really work well, especially for this, because for us to make this tube um, outside of the plasma cutter, this would have uh, taken us quite a bit of time to set up especially since we don't have a mill, so we would have been either trying to drill and cut or hand plasma cutting these slots and different things. So we would have, uh, would have taken us quite a while, so this should save us quite a bit of time. Before we cut the tube, there is one uh, major thing we want to look at, and we are using an ERW tube, so it has a weld on one side of the tube. Now, with our design, we need to make sure that we put this weld, if it's going to matter, uh, in the area that we want it. And for us, we are putting some slots in the center of this tube that will go over where that weld is. So we want to make sure that uh, the clearance side, because the way our design is set up is one side is going to be for bolts and the other side is really just clearance to get our sockets through there to get to the bolt heads. So we want to make sure that that clearance is on this side and the bolt, you know, where the bolts actually go through is on, on this side of the, the tube. And uh, so we've, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to take this tube and get it set up in the plasma table and make sure that it's square. So we started out by using our little plates here that we typically use on sheet. And uh, one thing we're going to do is we're going to go come over here and then we're going to zero our plasma table. And we're going to go ahead and run it down to the other end and make sure because I'm not... You know, I don't usually use this side, I usually use this side. I want to make sure that this tube is square to the gantry of the plasma table. Okay, so before we actually check our squareness of our tube, one thing we need to uh, go over is the height. Obviously, since we're going to be cutting a tube, it's two inches off the table. And we're going to have to, we're going to, have to adjust for that height. now. Uh, it's really critical that you know how much of a uh, relief you have. Well, after you make a cut, you'll know that your your uh, your cutter will come back up a certain amount. For us, that's an inch and a half, uh, and we we've actually added to that, made it larger. You can make that much smaller, but it's mainly just to make sure that you clear um, anything. You know, for us, you know, when things fall through and they might stick up, what you're trying to do is clear those items. And, uh, you know, I know when we got our table, it was much smaller. We went ahead and raised it up to an inch and a half. So what we will do is we'll actually go and take this Z-axis and we'll pretty much go all the way up. Then we'll go over our material and we'll make sure that we have over an inch and a half of space between the material and the torch. You know, so now we've got make enough space and we'll go and we'll get this uh, this torch squared up to the material. Alright, for squaring up the torch, the uh, the rounded radius on the corners can kind of be a pain. So we will use a square, something flat, put it against it to check and see. Where we're at. We'll 
zero out our X, Y, Z. Now we're going to go up, we'll go all the way down to the end, and we'll check it down there to make sure that we are square. Now we were not square, so we actually had to adjust that end. Basically, we have to keep going back and forth, and the goal is to make sure that this tube in the end is square to the gantry. Okay, so as we go to our sheet cam, we've got our 48 by 48 sheet here. Um, and what we're going to want to do first is make that sheet actually the size of our tube. So we've got a 37 and a half inch long tube. Tube is 4 inches in the Y direction. And uh, this here, as I was mentioned earlier about the clearance, the one and a half inch clearance, this is where you could adjust that. So if we had taller material, we could adjust this down to half inch, quarter inch, uh, something just to make sure that you get the clearance off of the tube. So here we have a, a replication of our tube on the table with the zero point down here in the corner. And we can go ahead and pull in our DXF. So this is where it uh, gets uh, a little dicey too. So we could have uh, probably done this a little bit better, but for, for this design, we're gonna just estimate where the center of that tube is. Because our design is basically centered on the tube, we can take a look and I think we're pretty good. Left, right. And one thing you can do is you see you have a coordinate system down here. You can actually use that to kind of estimate where you're at. So the edge of this hole is about you know 39 hundredths off the bottom. And the top edge of this one is you can see we're a little bit more, a little bit farther off the top edge about 20 thousandths difference um, what we can do is when you grab these you move them around you can see it kind of has a pretty big grid I'm sure there's a setting that can change that but what we can do instead is go in here and put for one and uh, it will actually adjust that so right now we're at 3.72 so we're about 25 thousandths off of the edge roughly You can see we're 45,000, so I actually went the wrong way. Let's see, we're at about eh, 35 or 350 thousandths, I guess. And we're pretty close. We're within uh, 30 thousandths or so, which is uh, good enough for us. So same thing here. We look at this, and we're about... 376 and down here we of course have to take it off of 37 and a half so we're at about 380 here so we know we're pretty good you know up uh, uh, y direction and our x direction so we'll go ahead and uh, cut this out see how it goes So we just use our standard uh, seven gauge cutouts. Now one thing you have to remember, and you can see here, so since we are not cutting a part out of a plate, we are cutting holes into a tube, we need to switch from an outside offset to an inside offset. So make sure you're using your inside offset. And now you see it flipped it around, so they're inside. Double check all those. Go ahead and run our tube. So one thing with running tubes that does suck, you can't really get away from it, is no matter if you have a water table or in my case here, a downdraft table, you're gonna end up with creating a lot of smoke because 
you know, we're not cutting all the way through the tube, we're just cutting to the top layer. And so your water table, and in my case, my downdraft table, isn't gonna do uh, a whole lot, you know, we're trying to get some suction down to this end to make sure that we pull some of the smoke down, but uh, we have, we've actually got an overhead fan as well uh, to pull smoke in general out of the shop and to recycle our air, so we'll end up having to turn that on as well. So, as you can see, two pretty much came out in great shape. Now, one thing you can see, obviously, down in, inside the tube, all of the crap that usually goes down in your table, goes down in your water, is now going to be going down the tube, so you will have to clean some of that out. Um, another, another reason why we, uh, you know, we cut the bottom side, which is the clearance side, before the uh, top side, because uh, actually... The holes in the top side were smaller, so some of that should come out these these bottom holes here whenever we're cutting the top. So now basically we'll basically just uh, have to repeat the same process we did for this side for the other side. So now we're ready to cut the second set of holes in our tube, the holes on the other side. And here's a, a trick that you can use uh, to cut those if you have a tube where you're cutting um, holes in each side that have to match. Now make sure you use the same zero point on, on this side. Obviously you've got to flip it over so your, your Y zero ends up flipping to the top. Um, but just make sure you use the same X zero. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, deactivate our operation on this first cut. So it's still gonna show it, but it won't cut it whenever we create the program. And now we'll go ahead and pull our second set of holes in. And what we can do is we can use that to line up our holes and you can see that oops, now you will have to do that to uh, move them around but you can see that it doesn't actually line up in our uh, original holes so we're going to need to change some things let's go to 0.5 0.55 we'll basically just Keep modifying this until we get that where we like it. Okay, so there we now have the second pattern, which is going to be the top side of our tube, uh, lined up with the bottom pattern that we already cut in the tube. 
and we will go ahead and do our operation on that pattern. Make sure we've got inside offset selected, and now you can see that okay, it's going to go in and it's going to cut the inside of those tubes or those holes, slots, whatever. So there we go, we've now got our holes cut, our slots cut pretty much concentrically on the top and the bottom of our tube of uh, basically a cross member mounting for a Jeep Cherokee and uh, you know saved us a ton of time over if we were to have to do this by hand um, or even to go and try to mill this or, uh, or do it in another manner, um, saved us a ton of time and you know, definitely is probably uh, is going to be accurate enough for us to use in our project. So that pretty much does it for this video. We uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or concerns, get a hold of us on our Facebook page, Taboo, or visit us at taboocustoms.com. Thanks.